Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the best Reddit answers being read to you. Enjoy! I am Elon Musk, CEO slash CTO of a rocket company, AMA. I'm a teacher, and I always wonder what I can do to help my students achieve big things. What's something your teachers did for you while you were in school that helped to encourage your ideas and thinking? Or, if they didn't, what's something they could have done better? Thanks! The best teacher I ever had was my elementary school principal. Our math teacher quit for some reason and he decided to sub in himself for math and accelerate the syllabus by a year. We had to work like the house was on fire for the first half of the lesson and do extra homework, but then we got to hear stories of when he was a soldier in World War II. If you didn't do the work, you didn't get to hear the stories. Everybody did the work. What daily habit do you believe has the largest positive impact on your life? Showering. I do that too. Which way to the space company club? Up. Hello Mr. Musk, I sold you a pair of hiking boots at the Sports Authority Elite in Corte Madera. I just wanted to know how your walk through the forest, as you described it, went? Also did you like the boots? Yeah, they were great. Awesome. Glad you enjoyed them. He didn't even use a period, he must have hated those hiking boots. Hi Elon, I'm already saving up for my Model 3. Can you share anything about the Model 3 that we don't already know? It won't look like other cars. I'm sold. He had meet it. It seems you have an extremely proficient understanding of aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, all various subdisciplines, avionics, power electronics, structural engineering, propulsion, energy storage, AI, etc. etc. nearly all things technical. I know you've read a lot of books and you hire a lot of smart people and soak up what they know, but you have to acknowledge you seem to have found a way to pack more knowledge into your head than nearly anyone else alive. Do you have any advice on learning? How are you so good at it? I do kinda feel like my head is full. My context switching penalty is high and my process isolation is not what it used to be. Frankly, though, I think most people can learn a lot more than they think they can. They sell themselves short without trying. One bit of advice, it is important to view knowledge as sort of a semantic tree, make sure you understand the fundamental principles, either trunk and big branches, before you get into the leaves slash details or there is nothing for them to hang on to. Hi Elon. A friend of mine is all paranoid about the computer singularity, and used your name as a source of his paranoia. Don't you think it could all be a bunch of hype? Awesome car slash rocket slash etc stuff you do. Huge fan. The time frame is not immediate, but we should be concerned. There needs to be a lot more work on AI safety. Hi Elon, I'll leave the technical questions to the experts. 1. Do you plan on getting any sleep tonight and 2. How will you celebrate if the test is successful? Best of luck. Yes, but probably only a few hours. Party at Coco Beach. Elon got the club going up on a Tuesday. Hi Elon. I currently work for Toyota Tsusho in Fremont doing the wheel assembly for Tesla. I want to let you know how proud I am to be however minutely linked to such a powerful and positively influential company such as yours. Keep doing the good work, sir. You are an inspiration to not only myself but countless others around the world. My question, you seem to have had to deal with a tremendous amount of adversity in a few of your ventures. Do you have any advice for those dealing with seemingly insurmountable adversity? There is a great quote by Churchill, if you're going through hell, keep going. How do you interpret that quote? That there's hope on the other side, or that you learn from the experience? Previously, you stated that you estimate a 50% probability of success with the attempted landing on the automated spaceport drone ship tomorrow. Can you discuss the factors that were considered to make that estimation? In addition, can you talk more about the grid fins that will be flying tomorrow? How do they compare to maneuvering with cold gas thrusters? I pretty much made that up. I have no idea. The grid fins are super important for landing with precision. The aerodynamic forces are way too strong for the nitrogen thrusters. In particular, achieving pitch trim is hopeless. Our atmosphere is like molasses at Mach 4. Has the Raptor engine changed in its target thrust since the last number we have officially heard of 1.55 mlb FSL thrust? Thrust to weight is optimizing for a surprisingly low thrust level, even when accounting for the added mass of plumbing and structure for many engines. Looks like a little over 230 metric tons, tilde 500 kLBF, of thrust per engine, 
but we will have a lot of them. Oh my goodness, I am so starstruck. You responded. Thanks for the information, and thank you so much for responding. You made my year. By the way, might 27 be the number of engines you're talking about? Brief question here from someone that is interested. SpaceX's current strategy revolves mostly around old-style rockets, even if they are now approaching complete reusability, grasshopper rocks. Has SpaceX looked into hybrid craft like the Sabre program happening in the UK, or look into the possibility of a space elevator, even at a thought experiment stage, in the way that Google and NASA have done? Thanks for doing this AMA. If you want to get to orbit or beyond, go with pure rockets. It is not like Von Braun and Korolev didn't know about airplanes and they were really smart dudes. Pretty sure you can count yourself in that list of smart dudes now. 1. What is your favorite airplane? 2. What is your favorite video game? 3. What is your favorite food? 4. If you consume alcohol, what is your favorite alcoholic drink? SR71. Hard to pick a favorite. I tend to like FPS with a story, like Bioshock, Fallout or Mass Effect, but was also a big fan of Civ and Warcraft. French and barbecue. Whiskey. Mr. Musk, how will you secure the first stage of the Falcon 9 to the barge when it lands? Gravity or some mechanism? Mostly gravity. The center of gravity is pretty low for the booster, as all the engines and residual propellant is at the bottom. We are going to weld steel shoes over the landing feet as a precautionary measure. In order to use the full MCT design, 100 passengers, will BFR be 1 core or 3 cores? At first, I was thinking we would just scale up Falcon Heavy, but it looks like it probably makes more sense just to have a single monster boost stage. Nice to see you are doing things the Kerbal way. Kerbal is awesome. Hello Elon, huge huge fan here. Question about the Mars Colonial Transporter, there has been a lot of speculation over comments about exactly how much mass you are hoping to send to the Martian surface with the MCT. Can you tell us how much cargo you would like to be able to land on Mars with MCT, not including the mass of the MCT itself? Goal is 100 metric tons of useful payload to the surface of Mars. This obviously requires a very big spaceship and booster system. Europa, attempt no landing there. True or false? There should definitely be a science mission to Europa. Bro haven't you seen the movie? Awful idea. Octopus monsters. Bill Cosby's nutsack called Elon Musk bro. And with that, a very good night to all. Would you ever consider becoming a politician? Unlikely. I'm still going to nominate you for King of Mars. In your recent MIT talk, you mentioned that you didn't think two four-stage recovery was possible for the Falcon 9. This is due to low fuel efficiency of kerosene fuel, and the high velocities needed for many payloads, high orbits like geostationary orbit. However, you also said that full reusability would be possible for the Mars Colonial Transporter launch vehicle. What have you learned from flights of Falcon 9 that taught you? A. That reuse of its second stage won't be possible and B. What you'll need to do differently with MCT to reuse its second stage. Actually, we could make the second stage of Falcon reusable and still have significant payload on Falcon Heavy, but I think our engineering resources are better spent moving on to the Mars system. MCT will have meaningfully higher specific impulse engines, 380 versus 345 VAC ISP. For those unfamiliar, in the rocket world, that is a super gigantic difference for stages of roughly equivalent mass ratio, mass full to mass empty. Emily Shanklin indicated in late 2013 that the Raptor would be the first of a family of engines designed for the exploration and colonization of Mars. Could you elaborate on her wording, i.e. was she simply referring to a vacuum version and standard version, or do you plan on building multiple methane-based engines with significantly different thrust and size specifications? Default plan is to have a sea level and vacuum version of Raptor, much like Merlin. Since the booster and spaceship will both have multiple engines, we don't have to have fundamentally different designs. This plan might change. Awesome, thanks so much for responding. Design life of Merlin 1D has been mentioned to be 40 cycles. Could you expand on what a cycle is? Is it just a start of the engine? There is no meaningful limit. We would have to replace a few parts that experience thermal stress after 40 cycles, but the rest of the engine would be fine. What would have been your answer or question? Leave it in the comments below. Slap that like and subscribe button for more, and check out the link in the video description for even more answers. Peace out, 
and catch you in the next video.